Let's move on and discuss immunity, uh, which is your ability to fight off infection, illness, and disease. And there are two uh, mechanisms that we use to fight disease, or two sets of mechanisms, really. And they're complementary, they work together. Uh, but the first mechanism is your innate or non-specific immune system. Innate means you're born with it, right? It's not Maybelline, right? You're born with it. Um, but it's also non-specific, meaning it will fight off lots of different types of attacks, right? Um, you know, maybe bacteria and viruses or lots of different types of bacteria or you know, parasites, whatever, all sorts of things, non-specific responses. In addition to the innate or non-specific immune system, we have the adaptive, adaptive or specific immune system. And this is uh, specific because it targets just uh, each particular cell, right? These are lymphocytes now that we're talking about in your adaptive immune system, will target a specific um, type of bacterium, not even just bacteria broadly, but a specific strain of E. coli or a specific strain of coronavirus, for instance, right? And it's so specific that it's not even just coronaviruses or influenza viruses, right? It's specific ones that have a particular antigen or set of antigens on the outside. Um, and so you have to have lots of different types of lymphocytes um, to protect you broadly, and each one is specific to a particular type of invader. It's also adaptive because you don't, um, you're not immune to these diseases um, all before you get them, right? You, you don't start producing antibodies, for instance, to, you know, flu A or the H1N1 flu until you are exposed to it. And then your body adapts to what you've been exposed to and then uh, comes back with a, a large immune response. So it's specific in that each cell has a, uh, an antigen receptor on it that responds to a specific antigen. Um, and it's adaptive in that uh, your body doesn't rev up your immune response until you get exposed to a particular pathogen. Your innate or nonspecific immune system includes physical barriers many of them in your integumentary system. So that includes glands like uh, your sweat glands, which uh, sometimes produce antimicrobial compounds within your sweat, uh, like lysozymes and antibodies. Uh, it also includes the epithelial coverings of your skin, right? These help protect you from any sort of pathogen that might want to get in. Um, hair um, is often there to prevent you from infection. Right. Um, one of the reasons we have hair in our noses and in our ears uh, is to protect us from stuff getting in there. Right. Sometimes I think that the most useful hairs are the ones that we trim. Uh, but all of these are non-specific, um, just very general uh, defenses against lots of different things, and they're they're innate, meaning you're born with these. You don't have to be exposed to uh, a particular bacterium for your nose hair to protect you from it. And you have other linings like mucous membranes that uh, are sticky, for instance, right? And when you have, you know, junk and bacteria and dust that gets into your respiratory system, mucous membranes trap those things. And then you can get rid of them, right, by blowing your nose or whatnot. Um, you also have uh, mucosa-associated lymphatic tissue to help protect you. Um, and you, you know, earwax in your ears, for instance, is there to help protect you from lots of different kinds of incoming, um, incoming pathogens. There are also cells in your body that fight off multiple different types of pathogens, and most of them are phagocytes. These are kind of your first line of cellular defense. You know, not necessarily first line of defense. That's probably your skin, but cellular defense, and they function. Um, the same way in lots of uh, against lots of different kinds of targets they just eat them up right this includes neutrophils which you have a ton of they are your most abundant leukocyte and they are mobile they move all over your body they're fast acting they can phagocytize debris or all different kinds of bacteria uh, they can also cause respiratory bursts where they essentially explode with a, a, a toxin um, and this is the kind of cell that's so abundant that you find it in your, your pus. Right? When you have an infected wound, uh, even just a zit, right, and it looks white because there's pus, that's because it's full of neutrophils and dead bacteria. Sorry to gross you out. 
Um, you don't have nearly as many of these, but eosinophils can also phagocytize foreign compounds, especially things that are coated in antibodies. They help you fight off larger pathogens like parasites and also anything that's coated in antibodies. And your monocytes, um, which become macrophages when they enter your tissues, um, help phagocytize lots of different kinds of, of pathogens. And so, again, they're nonspecific. Um, and they can become fixed macrophages, which get kind of stuck and they're immobile in your connective tissue. They just maintain a spot and defend it. And then you have free macrophages, which roam around your body eating things. So all three of these types of leukocytes uh, are, macro are phagocytes, and so they're nonspecific defense for your body. And this is an actual look at a phagocyte inside your body eating up several bacteria at once here. These are rod-shaped bacteria that are getting just scarfed up by this phagocyte. In addition to phagocytic cells, you also have natural killer cells, which are lymphocytes, but they uh, are... Uh, non-specific in that they will uh, fight lots of different kinds of of cells as long as they have uh, chemicals that mark them as as foreign. So um, tumor specific antigens, for instance, that you find on the outside of cancerous cells often, those are recognized by natural killer cells. And no matter what kind of cancer it is, right, they will destroy those cells so that that cancer doesn't spread. They also recognize foreign cells and bacteria and virally infected cells, and they will destroy them all, right? So if you destroy a virally infected cell, that virus doesn't have time to hijack that cell's machinery and make more of itself and expand. So your natural killer cells just roam your body, immune surveillance, finding any sort of cell that doesn't seem like it should be there. And the way they destroy these cells is interesting. So they'll bind with this cell, again, on these antigens, and they make a protein called a perforin. And that perforin will um, put, it will perforate, it'll put holes in the plasma membrane of the opposing cell, the abnormal cell, could be, again, virally infected or cancerous or some sort of bacterium, and they'll cause it to break apart. Um, but these proteins are produced and by ribosomes in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, if you remember last semester. And um, they're packaged in the Golgi apparatus. And so the Golgi apparatus almost looks like a cannon, like on the Death Star when it like moves to take aim. The Golgi apparatus will literally move across the cell, take aim at the other cell, and then start producing vesicles full of these perforins, which will then pop out and form these pores in the abnormal cell and destroy it. Natural killer cells are also one of your body's main defenses against cancer. So if you have a stem cell that multiplies frequently, right, makes lots of daughter cells, occasionally one of those daughter cells might be abnormal, and it might have a mutation that'll cause it to, to, to di divide out of control and keep multiplying. Um, well, if it has a mutation to do that, that means it has a, a, a difference in the proteins that it's producing based on its DNA. Natural killer cells will often recognize that and destroy the, the abnormal cell before it can cause uh, a tumor. Now, obviously, that doesn't always work, right? Sometimes your natural killer cells may get a bunch of those potentially cancerous cells, um, but if some survive, um, they can divide and and um, and establish uh, tumors elsewhere in your body, and this is called immunological escape. Um, and, you know, clearly cancer is a, a, a big killer in this country, and, and I'm sure we all know people who have suffered from it. Um, and so we know that while our body has defenses, they are not 100% effective. Another nonspecific uh, uh, innate defense we have um, against specifically viruses uh, are interferons. And these are chemicals, they're an example of cytokines, which are chemicals that are released by cells to coordinate local activities, but this is a specific kind, interferons, that cells that get infected by a virus will produce and release. And, you know, if you ever get attacked, right, you will very likely scream. And you might scream for a couple of reasons. One, to call for help, right? And two, to warn people nearby that there's somebody attacking folks, right? Um, so interferons are essentially a, a cellular scream. 
They yell, ah, right, I'm being attacked by a virus. And um, that will call to, um, you know, other immune cells like macrophages um, and natural killer cells and say, come here and help me. Um, but it will also warn nearby cells that might be vulnerable to viruses, hey, button up. So maybe stop um, producing, uh, replicating DNA, right? Or stop producing proteins from, from odd DNA that you don't recognize. And in that, that way, sometimes you can stop viral infection from spreading quickly because of these interferons. And there are multiple types uh, that I'm not going to get into now, but they all do some sort of activity like that. Either they call for help or they warn nearby cells about a viral attack. Another example of a defense your body has that can be nonspecific, although is often specific, is called uh, the complement system. And this is a long um, chemical pathway, kind of like clotting, uh, that I don't need you to know the details of. It, it involves uh, an activation of, of molecules and a cascade of these activations. Um, but I want you to know where it starts and kind of where it ends. And so the classical pathway uh, of the complement system is actually part of your specific um, adapt or adaptive immune system. And this means that it loves Mozart and Beethoven. Uh, and that's a bad joke. No, it means it starts with antibodies. Uh, when antibodies bind uh, to the attachment on a particular pathogen, um, then they can stimulate the, the classical pathway to kick off, and ultimately it will result um, in histamine release, which will cause inflammation, so dilation of blood vessels, so more blood comes, enhanced phagocytosis, it uh, calls to phagocytes and come, says, come here, help out. Uh, it also allows them to better sort of grab on and, and engulf um, these invaders, and it also allows the formation of these pores like we looked at with the, the natural killer cells. So that's the classical pathway starts with antibodies. You can get to these same endpoints, right, phagocytosis, inflammation, uh, pore formation, through an alternative pathway. Um, and this starts without the help of antibodies. Sometimes if there are enough pathogens in the area, um, then there are enough of a certain chemicals that they can kick this um, this cascade of, of chemical um, reactions into gear and can start this via an alternate pathway. This is the nonspecific way to go about having um, the complement system engaged, right? So most of the time, and the most quick and effective way to engage the complement system is specific, but you, it can be nonspecific through the alternative pathway. Speaking of inflammation, this is another example of a nonspecific innate immune response in that you can have inflammation in response to lots of different kinds of uh, pathogens. And I'm sure you're all familiar with inflammation, right? It's, uh, the, the cardinal signs of inflammation are redness, swelling, heat, and pain, occasionally loss of function. Um, and we think of it as bad, but really it's a result of dilation of your blood vessels, which brings more bread, more blood, um, and brings more white blood cells to help fight things off. It flushes out some of the toxins that might be there from bacteria, and all of that is helpful. Um, we just don't like it because it's uncomfortable, right? That blood causes redness and swelling and heat and sometimes pain. And we also sometimes get inflammation um, in response to allergies when it's not appropriate. Um, but inflammation itself is a way that we defend ourselves. It happens when basophils or mast cells, which are like basophils sitting in your connective tissue, release histamines uh, in response to tissue damage. And then histamines cause dilation of those blood vessels and cause you to get inf inflamed. The last uncomfortable um, innate defense that you have that I want to discuss is fever. Fever allows you to fight off your um, invaders because sometimes they don't operate very well at a higher temperature. It can inhibit, inhibit some viruses and bacteria. Um, and it essentially means not just that you're hot, like from a run or something, uh, but that you increase your set point so that if you're at 98.6, you're actually going to shiver to get your set uh, temperature up to like 101 or 102. This is caused by pyrogens, which are proteins that induce fevers in your hypothalamus. And this can be beneficial, but it's obviously very uncomfortable, 
and extreme fevers can also be dangerous, especially for young children.